So my name is Krista Funk. I'm from Grand Junction, Colorado. I ended up in Hawaii because of the Coast Guard. And it's a bit of a long story where there were a lot of different elements that came together, which led me to start doing water photography. So I was a competitive swimmer. I started when I was seven years old and I did that all the way through college, so age 22. Um, and then in 2003, when I was 13, I started getting into photography and film photography and learning, starting with the developing process. And really, my beginning was at like the basics, like learning everything from like just the nuts and bolts of everything, right, so photo wise. Yeah and then developing your own film and your own prints and going through the entire process. And I fell in love with it. And then um, I didn't know when I was finishing high school whether I wanted to go into uh, be a photojournalist or do marine biology. And I'd always kind of wanted to do both. And so I was talking to my parents about it and my mom just said, you know, get the hard science done first and then keep photography as a side and keep shooting and then go into photography after you do the science. And that's what I ended up doing. Um, I attended the Coast Guard Academy in New London, Connecticut. And that's, if you don't know, it's comparable to the Naval Academy or West Point. It just has a much smaller class size because the Coast Guard is smaller. Um, but I did that for four years and that's where I got my marine environmental science degree. So. It was a very, it was a military school for four years. And I got my bachelor's of science, graduated and was assigned to Hawaii. And my, the first cutter that I was on was a 378 out of Sand Island. I was a deck watch officer um, and we would go out for three months and we would be in th for three months. And then after that job, that was a two year tour I had a three-year tour at Sector doing emergency planning. And so within all of that, I kept doing photography and I kept swimming. And when I came out here in my free time, I would go, I was in the water all the time. I loved that you could get in the water every day if you wanted to, basically. Like barring days when it was pouring rain and the water was brown. <laughs> like, I was going, Oh my gosh, it's so easy to get into the ocean here. And so I just, I went, I started surfing and I knew that if my leash ripped off that I could swim in after my board and I could get myself back to shore. And I just kept going um, whenever I could. And then I started getting into body surfing and I'd always seen water shots when I was in high school even. and. I was, they were so fascinating to me and I wanted to take those one day because I was like, well, I swim, like how could I get these two to connect? And I didn't really know how to make that happen. And then um, my friend said, you know, you're into photography and you really enjoy sports photography. Get out about an hour before it gets dark and then go shoot photos and see if you like shooting surfing. And then I started noticing guys in the water with water housings and I ended up seeing a guy at Pipeline with a water housing and he was about to go in the water and I stopped and I dropped down and talked to him and I said, I just, I gave him an intro and he, he'd seen me a couple times body surfing at Sandy's and he said, you know, if you do decide to get a water housing, I'm going to look at the photos that you have. And if you decide to get a water housing, please let me know. Um, so I let him know and he took me out to shoot for the first time at Sandy's. And then um, throughout the summer, I just, I kept, kept going and I kept consistently focusing more on water photography. And I started going out to surf spots in town and started small and kept kind of working my way up to bigger days um, in town. And then when winter rolled around, I started I started shooting at Rocky Point actually um, because I knew my goal was pipeline and I wanted to learn about uh, shooting a fast left and shooting people that are doing turns and what I'm looking for and what I want to see in photos. And so 
started going out there and then he said, you know, when you feel like you're ready, let me know and I'll take you out on a small day at pipe. And I let him know. And fortunately we had a three to four foot day coming up and he took me out and explained how to get in and how to get out before we even got in the water. And then we got in the water and as soon as we were in and I was there, like, I, I still have pictures from that day and the barrels were like, they weren't giant barrels by any stretch of the imagination, but like, I just remember having full body chills and going, oh, I'm hooked. Like, this is, this might change things. And so, and sorry for the qualifier. Um, after that point, I kept going out and I kept progressing into bigger days and kept learning from mistakes that I would make and just diving under waves and how to position myself and kept progressing and kept working my way up. So it seemed like it was a really fast process for me if you just look at a span of years that I've been doing it. But it's almost like all the years of swim team, all the years of shooting outside of the water and then getting in the water and really starting to refine my skills with editing and shooting very consistently like it all just kind of came together with a whole lot of life experiences and everything that it wasn't something I just like turned around and did and I'm doing what I'm doing right now it was more of like a build-up and I didn't know how it would come together and it came together in a pretty fantastic way like I get to be in the ocean I have that marine biology side going and then I also have the photography side so everything kind of combined really well. Swimming up in a lap like up and down in a lap pool though it's a whole lot different than an ocean. Like the oceans I think what helped me too is um, going out and surfing and body surfing and going consistently and learning about currents and just listening to people um, talk about it. I'm just trying to glean as much information as I could with how to be in the water and have my head on straight when there's a lot of water moving and there's a lot of current and what to do and how to react. So I think that swimming background and knowing that like having that knowledge that I can just like if something bad happened or I just needed to get out of a situation I could just calm myself down and trust that I could get in like just knowing like I was um I was a distance swimmer and so just kind of that prolonged endurance like and that mindset it's really helped and EOS Elon 2 so Canon EOS Elon 2 film camera um I just <laughs> I remember that we'd actually I'd let my parents use it to take some Christmas pictures of us and I didn't I don't know if I hit a setting or I did something weird but somehow I got it to like take photos over the ones they had taken so I remember that first like roll I ruined like half of our Christmas pictures because <laughs> I kept playing with the camera and I kept wanting to shoot it and um so that was, that was a little bit of a learning experience my mom wasn't too pleased with the results of that <laughs> she was like we needed these for the Christmas card. I'm sorry, Mom! <laughs> like, and it was digital was still like, just like three mega megapixels was a big deal or something. And so, and everything would come out relatively fuzzy and the print quality was, yeah. so everyone was still doing film. And yeah, that was, that was one of my first incidences, but um, that camera was, that was awesome. I think my dad, that was an eBay find and it's, I still have it. Um, and it works great. And it really just starting with film and learning the nuts and bolts. And even I had a class that I took, it was my, um, freshman year of high school, but we started out with pinhole cameras. That's why I just did this motion. Like, cause you just, you make a little hole in a black box and then you expose the film and go from there. And so it was just, you really started out at the basics and then moved forward with learning everything. And I think that really 
it helped a lot and I really enjoyed it. My first water housing setup was um, was SPL. It was, oh my gosh, this is okay for any gearhead. I can't remember the material that it was. It was their plastic. It was a really thick plastic one and it was bright yellow and I had a Canon 60D in there and I was running the 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens because I wanted to make sure that I was really into it before I went pell-mell and got all my dream lenses and everything um, and kind of like the ports that I needed for every like other type of lens so had that yellow housing Canon 60D and then the kit lens and that was my first setup I would say words of advice I'd say it's even intimidating for guys because they don't even go out there with a point of difference guys go out there and it's like oh it's just another guy with a camera whatever and you go out there and you're like it's a girl there's a girl shooting what what huh I don't think that's a guy with that hair weird oh I hope she's gonna be okay out there like but you have that point of difference though and so you almost go out there with a little bit more of an advantage because you're not just another guy in the water and it's not a bad thing to be a guy I'm not saying it like that but that's something you kind of have to keep in mind and also just I can't emphasize enough starting small and building yourself up to being able to go out into bigger surf and building up that confidence because without it you can put yourself in dangerous situations so quickly where you're not even concerned about the sex of anybody out there you're just going oh my gosh this is gonna land on my head right now like if you're if you get panicked in those situations it's all bets are off so really just start small work your way into it and talk to people and be nice and be respectful when you go out there and if you do say if you go out to a spot where there's a pecking order um, some spots have them because they're more crowded and some spots don't but if there is a pecking order just go and sit in the back and be really mindful and really cognizant of what you're doing and aware all right so right now my um, my primary camera is actually it's a 7d mark ii um, and then i have a 24 to 105 millimeter lens in there um, zoom port which can be really helpful when you've got waves that are breaking in different spots like you have waves like it's not consistently one spot that you're shooting so if you've got something like the barrels further away you can still zoom in and then if there's something closer you can go wide and you can still be in a good position for it you're not just stuck with i wouldn't say stuck but I just feel like it gives you that extra flexibility so I really like it. I'm still using SPL for the housing and they're freaking fantastic. It's, this thing is bulletproof. It's been through so much and I am just, yeah, been through a lot with this housing. <laughs> I also have other lenses and ports that I use. I 18 to 15 millimeter fisheye, 70 to 200. Um, millimeter the zoom lens another one that has the zoom port which is fantastic because just having that flexibility with your range is can be so nice and that lens is gorgeous um 50 millimeter i don't you name it you hear people using it people go out with prime lenses a lot i really like 16 to 35 millimeter um that lens is i've gotten some just I don't know just the bokeh and everything oh, it's just good yeah that's but anyways so that's the housing and so when i'm actually gearing up sunscreen zinc and then i'll put tinted on top of the zinc really important because the sun out here is ridiculous like i don't you'd think you'd get your sunscreen wired that would be your first thing that you do but I feel like I spent way too many years getting sunburnt out here just with like shitty products and I'm just so oh let's go back to this surface sunscreen shameless advertising they make a great product check them out so um I started working with Isaris wetsuits this year their um suits are this is actually I want to say this is two millimeters and it's Yamamoto neoprene and 
Well, their products are awesome. They keep you warm and the material is soft. Like just wetsuit technology in general has just gone far and above what it used to be. So yeah, this is the suit that I wear and keeps me warm all day. So long hours in the water, I'm in this without a question. And nice part too, especially if you're a girl looking for a suit, you want legs. It's just more coverage, so it's less skin area that you can rash out on the reef. Like, these companies that make them, like, up to here, it's yeah. just like, what is, there's no point, you don't want that kind of suit when you're shooting. Just don't recommend it. Okay. Um, and then I use this, um, I don't use this at Pipeline. I'll use this on Waimea days, and then if I'm going to Outer Reefs or Jaws, I'll be wearing this. Um, and what it is, it's a float vest. And the nice part about having this um, is that it keeps me above the bumps. Like if I'm swimming and shooting and I need, there's sometimes with big waves, you'll get bumps that'll come in front of you while you're shooting and it'll take a 20 foot wave and make it look like it's one foot. And then you're just like, ha, ah, this is great. Okay, well, that wasn't a one foot wave, but all right. Let's go on to the next one. Let's forget about that. And so this kind of gives you that little bit of extra oomph. So if you kick up, you can kind of get above those bumps. So it helps. And then go with fins. So I used a fins. Um, I used a different type in it. Oh my gosh. I, I don't know what it is with my feet, but I just got just the big calluses on them and it just was they just weren't the right fins for my feet and um long story short the fins are the best just because of their soft foot pocket and um i also wear these compression socks and they help keep the calluses down like i'm talking calluses on like one of the ones on the top of my foot i had to get surgery on it it was like a 10 minute surgery but he had to basically take out all this like calcified crap from the top and so I don't want that again so the compression socks and then soft foot pockets is what I use and finally the helmet so I had a period where I'd been shooting for a while and I got kind of froggy and I started not wearing my helmet on small days and then I was shooting at Rocky Point one day and I think it's only funny or entertaining because I didn't get knocked out, but I swam down and I literally just, cause I closed my eyes, I wear contacts. I swam into a rock. I swam down and I just head butted a rock. <laughs> I came up and there's a feeling when you hit something or when you impact and you know you're gonna, you probably are gonna need stitches. Like there's a feeling that you get, like you're like, oh, I think that split the skin. So I put my hand up to my head and I looked and it was bloody and I went, okay, I'm going in. And it was, where was it? It's, I think it's like right here. Um, long story short, if I had been wearing a helmet, I would have hit right here and I wouldn't have needed to get freaking stitches. And the doctor was like, oh, I can see your skull. And I'm like, that's not good. Please close this up. Thanks. <laughs> like, um, so always, always, wear a helmet and it's reef protection it's people are I don't know what is going on right now but I've seen people throwing their boards and like not being able to duck dive more this season than I have any other season so don't trust people have a helmet because if they throw their board and it whacks you at least it's whacking a helmet and not not anything else so it's definitely big safety thing and I've gotten stuffed into holes out there and gotten rattled around and this has been nice and scratched up from that but it was there and I had it on and so it wasn't more head injury stuff so it's not I think there's a misnomer with people getting like a placebo effect like oh I'm gonna be safe if I wear a helmet no that's not the case but you'll be better off if you get into some kind of accident where maybe your housing gets racked up in a weird way and it hits your head like I had that I was swimming out one time and my housing I went under a wave and I thought I was good and I think like a vortex or something under there hit my arm and my arm racked back and 
I jammed my housing on my helmet. Like, so it was all a lot of things that happened that didn't involve me getting hurt because I had this. So this is pretty key to this entire outfit. All right, so the first one um, was actually of a lifeguard. It was December 31st, 2019. Uh, GT. He is a bodyboarding world champion. Anyways, we had this big vertical sand broom built up at off the wall. And just with like how the swell was coming in and the backwash, it was causing these just nuts flares. Um, and he got one that was like, that was this perfect storm. It was the backwash coming off of that berm was, it had to be like at least four feet. And then it combined with the wave and it just shot up and flared out the whole barrel over him. Like he turned on this wave and it started out at one size. And then when it, like the backwash combined it at least like doubled, like or more than doubled in size and just was, <sighs> was like, I've never seen anything like that out there. And that was just like, that just happened. We were all like, the whole little, like the group that was out there, we were all going like, did this, did we really just, was that real? Like that just happened? Um, so that shot was just, oh my gosh. That's like, has a spot in my memory bank. That's not going away anytime soon. Um, then another photo that I, Love. I'd always wanted to get a really, a, just a good air shot from the back of a wave with like perfect lighting and just all of the things like in order. And I, I shot, um, Flynn Novak was actually, he was one of the guys that I started working with originally that was willing to meet up consistently. Um, and that helped me so much shooting him because learned how to shoot people turning and what to look for and um, doing aerial maneuvers too. And so I really got to get a good grasp of being able to focus on one person and lining up with one person. And um, long story short, helped me a ton. And one day we were actually, we were looking at pipe and it wasn't, it wasn't really a day to write home about. It was kind of just closing out and really dumpy but when he looked at it he went you know that end like there's there could be an air section on that that end part if you just if you race it enough and I kind of went oh okay I could see that sounds good like let's go for it and I think we're maybe out there about 20 minutes and I saw him like like a certain I don't know you get a posture and you see how they're like how fast they're going down the wave like they're just ignoring everything else basically that's coming because they're gonna they're picking up speed basically to do the maneuver and I, I just saw his like I read his body language and I went oh okay I went I swam under the wave because I had a feeling he was gonna do an air and swam under made sure there weren't any water droplets on my port and then he flew into the air and it just timed it perfectly. And it was just sunny and blue. And just, it looked like it was like the prettiest morning on God's green earth. And I'm just sitting there and I'm just like, any other day that would have just been like, eh, whatever, pipe's not that good. Let's not go. It's kind of weird everywhere else. We'll just shoot another day. And I, sometimes those days that you discount are days that you get amazing things. And then, the third image that I'll talk about is one of Leah Dawson at Rocky Point. And that was another one of those days. I had three people that I was trying to line up to shoot and they were all sitting in three different spots. And I was like, I don't think I planned this very well. And then there, it's Rocky. So there's also like 500 other people in the water and I'm just going, you know, you know how is this gonna go? And she took off on, she took off going right from um, from the left, and that's usually that's kind of a mixed bag. Um, 
doing that, usually don't get too much of a section to work with, but how she took off, I thought I was too far zoomed in and it was, I was like, oh, I'm gonna cut out like the actual size of the wave that she's going on. Like, that's frustrating, but I shot it anyways and it ended up, oh, okay. So Leah is just, her surfing's just graceful. There's, if there's one word for it, it's just so, oh, it's grace. And that photo just, it has it. Cause the, it's like her hair's blowing back in the wind and she's just standing there and it's just, it's almost like, oh, you're just like relaxed when you look at it. It's something that's just beautiful. And capturing that of her, just especially on a day that I had in my head is something that was like, meh, was really, was went, oh, okay. So you can't knock those days. Like I was just, it was something that I, yeah, I won't forget that one. That just like, I, like seeing it come together and seeing how her hair was blowing and her posture and everything. It just, yeah, it made the photo. So that's that. Those are my three. Take things slow. If you want to do this, don't rush yourself out into bad situations. Learn about where you're shooting, watch where you're shooting. Um, talk to people who surf there if you don't surf it already and you haven't already before. And just, I can't overemphasize or I can't emphasize enough just being smart about when you go out and going, is this something that like, if something went wrong, could I handle getting myself back in? Could I handle like this, this and this, and really think yourself through things before you just run full steam into, um, into mother nature. Because that's what the ocean is, it's mother nature and you have to have a healthy amount of respect when you're working with her. And also, always, always, thanks to all the lifeguards. We really appreciate it. You do an awesome job. And um, don't, you need to rely on yourself and your swimming ability too. If you're not a strong swimmer, build that ability up. Like don't rely on a leash that's attached to a surfboard or something floaty that you hold on to. Like that shouldn't, you should try to develop like water skills before you put yourself in those positions and really be cognizant of that. And most of all, enjoy what you're seeing because being out there and being part of it and what you get to capture, oh, it's just, it's stunning. And the way light moves in water and just seeing all different kinds of light and how it works is something that I appreciate so much. And I'm so grateful that I get to do this. And I, don't, I really wouldn't have been able to do any of this without um, support from my family and my husband. So I'm really grateful to everyone that's helped me along the way. I really appreciate it. So that would be all. So thanks for listening. <laughs>